They had to be expelled from another special ed placement somewhere. So they were they were struggling in a lot of ways. A lot of 15 to 17 year olds were reading at a primer level, right? And these these were not nobody there had autism or developmental disabilities or anything. They were just, you know, uh, low socioeconomic, bad luck starting the school. And then you get started getting expelled and you're running with the wrong crowd. Um, so one of the things I think is to understand negative reinforcement first that it's not a curse word right but then that these kids have learned like they have so many well um, developed uh, escape and avoidance behaviors even if you're sitting down let's do our di reading right we're going to start our di reading like damn that looks like a big lesson i'm not even gonna make it to the table without acting like something came up so we started our first week or two it was some sheep behavior and it was just one minute timings on things that was always below their level and we do an adequate job on a one minute timing and this thing is done for the day and we're like the we're playing ping pong and stuff so like well shit, i'll do a great job on your one minute timing yeah. uh and that's negative reinforcement you get done faster because you did better mm -hmm. it reminds me so there there's this uh workout program p90x it's like an older one and one of the things that they would do is it yeah, remember you, not it doing got, that one yeah yeah <laughs> i have a I, I lived with a guy at the time who did it like religiously and my joke was why am I not in shape? I've been watching these DVDs for 30 days straight. You know how boring it is to sit on my couch for an hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but uh, but what they did was they they gradually shaped up the behavior. So like when you first started your workouts were maybe like 10, 15 minutes. Like, so it wasn't bad at all. And then by the end of it, you're doing these hour and a half workouts and you don't even realize that it's happened. And in a lot of ways, just by saying like, you know, you can do anything for a minute, you know, yes. it, it, it helps get you there and realize that it's not such a bad thing anymore. So. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, how did how did that evolve for for you in that setting? Uh, in the school, yeah, uh, yeah. As I already established, I didn't do the P ninety X. I, I do actually like to exercise <laughs> some. I'd rather joke about not exercising than, <laughs> than actually talk about the exercise. Uh, but metaphorically, it works kind of the same way. Is mm -hmm. that um, the thing that seems so bad um, can be made to be not so bad, and then your concern about it, whatever we want to call it, your anxiety about it about getting started on it, that kind of melts away. And then you're doing it and you're contacting different kinds, a variety of reinforcers. <laughs> Obviously some of them are gonna be, oh, you get some points and there's more ping pong time and, and I'm praising mm -hmm. you and stuff like that. But some of these learners began looking for posters to see if they could read the posters. They're like, damn, I'm learning to read. I wanna see how many other things I can read. And that's like, yeah. I'm getting goosebumps, honestly, thinking about that. Cause some of like, you feel competent and one of the really misunderstood things about motivation is that a sense of competence is automatically reinforcing. You're feeling mm -hmm. right, you're moving forward, that feels good. You do those things more. Um, so now 10 minutes feels, you know, now like 30 seconds would have felt like three weeks ago. Yeah. And now you were in a very specialized setting, but I, I feel a lot of times that I do mostly public school consultation. And one of the things that I run into a lot is the school will say, you know, you can't put that intervention in place because it either goes against our school policy or it's it's too much work. Uh, and I'll say like, well, okay, well, here's your options. You can have this kid continue to not engage and not do anything, or we could bend the rules a little bit for this kid and, yeah. and have them have them be successful. Um, do you, have, have you encountered that outside of kind of that more specialized? Yeah. Sure. So what? What, do you have any advice on how to tackle situations like that when you are trying to put these things in place? Sure, yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, one is that I try, I, I'm not, it's not a one size fits all, obviously, right? So mm -hmm. everyone doesn't have to go to one minute timings on things in a day and then they have 89 minutes free of their <laughs> reading block and, and and they're a pain in people's butts because they have 89 free minutes, right? So, so I, I find a reasonable level, I try to find a reasonable level there. <clears throat> um, one is, and this is a little bit antithetical to what we've been talking about so far, but I also appreciate in terms of our learners being flexible, I appreciate that sometimes being willing to do boring work, to do a good job on boring work, that's just a more flexible learner. It's not always going to be in a game format. So I get with the teachers on, on sharing with, yeah, some of it's going to have to be like this, but by the way, now let's be really empirical about it. This kid is right now with this boring work he is it's, no one's writing home about how he's doing with this boring work right now so something's going to have to change when i've gotten to the to points where the discrepancy was way too big like what this kid needs and what the teachers are saying they're 
allowed to do, none of that's going to fit whatsoever. Then I, I pull my hamstring on the... <laughs>